commands are to manage the dog when they're not doing something wrong. So first thing we want to look at is when the dog is free, when I'm not giving any direction, right? What things does the dog do that I don't want them to do, right? I use the example many times. Digging holes, chasing animals, jumping on people and doors, yeah. right? Getting into things that they're not supposed to, this, that, whatever, mm -hmm. right? Any of those types of things, you guys have to just correct for that stuff. Stop correcting yeah. for your dog's energy level. Stop asking them to do commands in those moments. When you're hanging out in your house, right, mm -hmm. and your dog does something that you don't want them to do, right? That's not energy related. That's yeah. just that behavioral issue I do not want you to do. Yeah. Don't use commands to stop that problem. Correct, correct the dog for that thing so it goes away so mm -hmm. they learn more specifically what it is that you expect out of them so you could further get to a place where you don't need to give structure, yeah. right? When our dog is free all the time, right, or free 90% of the time, right, you don't have this ping pong of back and forth of like bottle it in, explode it out, <clears throat> bottle it in, explode it out, bottle it in, explode it out right? They create a baseline energy of not constantly expecting the big release, mm -hmm. right? And instead, just being calm and chill of just, if I want to go walk into the kitchen to go get the water bowl, I don't have to be released from this bed to go flying over to the water bowl. I could just go just to go. it whenever I want without having all that anticipation buildup, <clears throat> right? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like that, that can go on, that can go on forever, right? <clears throat> so the first thing we need to do is that, right? Is we need to create a default where our dog can be free the majority of the time, yep. right? Now, in the situations where we do need to use commands, we need to ask ourselves the question of if there is going to be a problem with an energy level when I release the dog, I need to shift why the dog is so energetic to be released, mm -hmm. right? So let's take an example of... I, I, I don't even necessarily know if there was an exact example of where it was a problem, obviously, but... Let's say, hypothetically speaking, yeah, here, I'll give you a good example of a situation I ran into, right? So when I used to do Mondio Ring with Vinny, right, we would go train in fields all the time, right? Yeah. And when we went to go train in fields, something really freaking energetic and exciting happened, right? Yeah. He, we would get to that field, we'd go do bite work, we'd go play high energy tug games, ball, and, and train, and do these really high drive driven exercises. Yeah. So Vinny started to create an association of when we got to a field, even if he was in command, energy level just went through the fucking roof mm. because he was expecting for those things to happen. Yeah. And it hit a point where it was almost, and this was years and years ago, it was almost embarrassing because I would go near a field and he would just, he'd be in a heel position perfectly, but he'd be like, ah, ah, ah. he'd be like screaming and barking and just <laughs> so fucking pumped yeah. up, right? <clears throat> and he's a Malinois, like that's what they do. You know what I mean? Mm. But that I determined to be appropriate. But... I knew correcting would not have, it didn't stop it. I, tr I tr When I was a, a younger trainer, I used to try to correct all that shit. The whining, the bark, everybody says, oh, don't let your dog make all this noise and this and that. It's like, he's a fucking dog, right? Like, yeah. he's, <laughs> he's a Malinois also. Like, that's the dog he is. Correcting that stuff only amped it up and made it worse because oh, he yeah. didn't know what those corrections were for because that energy was so mindless, mm -hmm. right? And all it did was frustrate him and make him even more freaking amped up every time we got to those places, right? Yeah. So I had to take a step back. I had to kind of reverse engineer. Why is he getting so excited every time we go to a field? He was because we did high energy, high drive games. So what did we do to combat that? I spent like four months going to fields and sitting at a picnic bench and doing a downstay. Mm. Or walking calmly through the field in a heel position for yeah. 20 minutes and then going home. And I made sure not one exciting thing happened in that environment, mm. right? And, <clears throat> excuse me, over time, what do you think happened? He chilled out. He chilled out. Yeah. We can go walk through a field, and it can be real enjoyable and real nice, and he don't get himself all fucking worked up. Yeah. So it's disassociating that that want. Yes. 